use the first class of dynamics. Uh, let's write it our title, which is dynamics. So we are gonna cover in this semester. Dynamics is a um, sub-branch of mechanics, basically. So let's go through again uh, some other terms. Mechanics. Uh, let's write it down. Mechanics. Okay. Uh, let me write it. Let's So, mechanics, let's define mechanics. Mechanics is the study of how body reacts to forces acting on it. So, let's write it down again. The study of, the study of, study of body. React to, react to forces acting on it. So basically, the mechanics is the study of re uh, body react to forces and acting on it, right? So let's do these guys. Let's make it in a uh, box. Because we are gonna divide these mechanics into two sub branches, and the first one is which you already took in the first semester and you are familiar to. Okay, uh, let's write it down. As you guess, it is statics. So the first subject which you cover for the first semester is statics and now we are gonna go through this semester which is dynamics right here. let's both define statics and dynamics statics is the study of bodies in equilibrium the study the study of bodies in equilibrium. As you remember, uh, in statics we have three main equations, which is total um, F is equal to zero and total M is equal to zero. Uh, here in dynamics, the study of let's define it, the study of the study of bodies in motion so it's not in equilibrium anymore it's in motion so the forces the total force acting on it is not in zero so okay let's put both sides also in brackets so you already see statics so i am done here you know the branches of it like how it diverse but right now we are in dynamics which is the study of bodies in motion when it's in motion uh, how it divided into again and sub branches we have another sub branches of two which is the first one is uh, kinematics the other one is kinetics kinematics Okay, the first sub branch is kinematics, the other one is so uh, let's write it down kinetics. Let's put this guy in here and let's define it. This one is uh, kinematics is concerned with geometric aspects of. Uh, motion. Uh, let's write it down. It is the concerned, concerned, concerned uh, 
with geometric 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 aspects of motion motion right uh, let's put this guy here and we will define a little bit later and let's define kinetics kinetics is concerned concerned with the forces causing causing uh, the motion okay so let's put this guy here and then let's put these two in the break uh, okay. so we divide it into the dynamics into kinematics and kinetics the first we are gonna go through the kinematics so it's just um, dealing with the dealing with geometric aspects just like the we are not taking care of any forces on it of course it's there is a force because it's in motion it may be of course in a constant motion but uh, we are gonna say uh, in motion when we act forces is not in equilibrium which is the dynamics uh, side of wheel then after the kinematics we are gonna uh, define all the velocities and uh, velocities acceleration and the distances the first part then the kinetics we are gonna define like the uh, all forces how is acting the friction forces like body is again going inside this uh, topic uh, so both of them when we go through the detail you will understand also uh, so it, like in short way the kinematics we are gonna go through all this uh, velocity finding velocity acceleration and blah blah for not only rectilinear um, uh, motion we are gonna go through the curvilinear motions and polar coordinates also uh, is gonna be in this uh, class topics and kinetics one uh, we will go through uh, from beginning to the end uh, as you see is impulse and uh, some other like uh, forces, impulse, and uh, work and energy, blah blah. It's gonna go through in this kinetics um, subsection. Uh, after we cover in dynamics, kinematics, and kinetics, also we are in civil engineer, so we need to uh, deal with some other term, which is vibration. Okay. So we will go through a little bit vibration because why it's important that this vibration subject because it's gonna be the introductory of uh, how the um, earthquakes uh, like apply the forces on the uh, buildings. So it's just gonna be the introductory. So you will go through the in structural dynamics this topic a uh, little bit detail but um as civil engineering maybe it, we thought as a department uh, vibration to see the first step of vibration uh, uh, like very uh, fundamental knowledge is gonna be uh, utilized by you guys uh, and then uh, you will be familiar a little bit familiar when you start with structural dynamics next year and uh, let's okay start uh, the introductory part is this one like uh, we defined all dynamics kinematics kinetics and a little bit vibration as i said like why we are gonna go through vibra vibration and uh, let's start with our rectilinear motion and uh, we will keep doing uh, jumping uh, step by step until we will cover all the subjects okay let's start our first chapter it is our introduction and rectilinear 
Break the linear kinematics. What is break the linear? We are gonna see right now. It's on the direct path and uh, it's not curvilinear, it's rectilinear, it's rectangular, it comes from rectangular, so it's um, Cartesian coordinates we are using, that's why it's called rectilinear kinematics. Uh, let's first understand why do we study dynamics, why do we study dynamics, right? So, as a civil engineer, why do we study this dynamics? Because it is important to understand, like for example, in hydraulics, hydraulics, what we are gonna uh, learn, like they say, um, motor driving pump. We are using in hydraulics motor driving pump and how we can ask ourselves can we determine how much torque does it require to drive this pump so from one water from one elevation to another elevation how we are going to calculate it we can use dynamics or can we predict the system performances, this pump efficiency performances, like how many water does it take in this pump, like in one uh, certain pump? How we are going to calculate it? With dynamics, we are going to calculate this. Also, in structural uh, sub branches of Let's say structural dynamics, right? So if it is um, earthquake studies, earthquake studies, as I said, is uh, is um, behave like a vibrates vibration. So if we know dynamics, we will see or we will predict the earthquakes studies also uh, in uh, traffic engineering so the curves how is gonna be curves or like um the the velocity of the car the maximum velocity let's say maximum velocity maximum velocity of the car and uh, Let's write again velocity. Okay, maximum velocity of car. We all can drive with using dynamics. So that's why, as a civil engineer, dynamics is important. As these examples, we can extend it to all other stuff as well. In short, let's define in here. Let's divide it into two, and then we can write it down here. What we are really concentrate is measure, measuring, measuring, measuring objects, velocity, acceleration with respect to time. Okay, so basically we are driving the velocity and acceleration which this acceleration is end up of forces acting on the object so it will give us all the parameters velocity is going to give us the distance and blah blah so that's why in motion we will see the velocity and acceleration and then we will define all parameters according to all, all the measures we can take with using our dynamics now after that one, let's go through uh, all the definitions we need to know, first of all, like velocity. Okay, it's the basic physics one uh, knowledge, but it's good to remember stuff. The velocity is a measure of 
the rate of change in the position of a particle and it is vector quantity is a vector quantity has both magnitude and direction we know that one the, what is the uh, vector quantity and the magnitude magnitude of the velocity magnitude of the velocity velocity is speed and it's shown as in standard units is meter per second and British units is uh, feet per second, right? Okay, so we define here the velocity like uh, is a measure of the rate of change in position, right? So when we say the rate of change, it means like with time, respect to time. Okay. Uh, what about the average velocity? Let's define the average velocity. Average velocity. Average velocity. Okay. So let's define it with a mathematical form, a mathematical representation. Sorry. Mathematical representation of uh, average velocity, which is so. As I said, is a vector quantity. So V average is equal to is equal to delta r, which is change of the position r, which is the vector over change of time. So this is like how much time it passes. Uh, we need to change like how much the, the vector quantity pass or the, uh, the vector um, quantity over the passing time, changing passing time. And we will see the, uh, this example uh, and we will understand better. Let's go through the, uh, if it is instantaneous velocity, instantaneous velocity so instantaneous velocity is so if we take average velocity if we take the instantaneous velocity it is basically again the velocity which is what we use it is uh, the partial derivative of so the limit is gonna goes to zero time so it's gonna be partial derivative of the distance over time, respect to time, and uh, other other parameters is speed. Speed. Let's show it in this way. Let me bring here. So speed is. Let's say uh, the is a magnitude, so it's not a vector anymore. So v is o is equal to ds which is total path over dt with respect to like total path uh, derivative with respect to time and um, average speed the last definition of this velocity is average average speed is so it is v is equal to v average, let's say, v average is uh, the total s, total path over delta t is going to give us average speed. Okay, uh, we define all these velocity terms. Velocity, average velocity, instantaneous velocity, speed, and average speed. Right now, let's go through the acceleration term because, as we said, here we are measuring the object's velocity and acceleration. So we define all of them. Okay, first part is acceleration. 
let's define it is the rate of change in the velocity of in the velocity of a particle right it is again a vector quantity quantity which is has direction and magnitude as we know and typical unit is meter as we know in standard meter square second right or feet over second square so we define acceleration as well and as we do same thing as acceleration we need to find the instantaneous instantaneous acceleration let's write it instantaneous acceleration so again uh, we can write it down we can write it down for vector form and uh, scalar form okay let's write it first vector form which is a bar is equal to the derivative of the velocity so vector form over the t right so the first derivative of velocity with respect to uh, time this is vectoral form vectoral form vectoral and a is equal to the um, dv over dt dv over dt or uh, sorry not dv this is ds right so is a scalar form so speed over uh, with respect to time derivative with respect to time or d um, so no, it's not the s dv over dt which is the scalar form of the v and dt which is we can convert it to second derivative of s over dt square it, it's not dt square is a second derivative of S with respect to time. So this is a scalar form, right? Scalar form. As again, I said, is we know that this all knowledge from our physics one class. So let's keep moving. Let's keep moving the definition. Acceleration. Acceleration. Acceler acceleration can be positive which is increasing or negative which is decreasing speed right so acceleration can be positive uh, so it's increasing the speed or negative it is the decreasing the speed another uh, another definition is the differential equations differential equations for velocity and or velocity and acceleration acceleration can be written as Yes. Let's write a, a famous differential equation when we take into account velocity and acceleration, which is A, which is uh, acceleration, ds 
is equal to V dV. So we shouldn't forget this differential equation. And I'm going to derive how we come up with this ADS V dV form. Okay. Okay. Let's uh, start right here. And okay. After we finish up all this acceleration, instantaneous acceleration, and uh, these old terms, let's draw our famous uh, velocity s and uh, all these uh, fundamentals equations. We will see, and then you will you will remember all in your physics one class again. So let's if a uh, Let's make a consideration if we consider consider S0 and V0 okay uh, V0 okay represents the initial position initial position and velocity of the particle at time is equal to zero. So when time is equal to zero, let's say S0 and V0 is the, um, the S0 is first position and V0 is our initial velocity. Then we can derive all the formulas which is we know that dv, we, because we bring from the um, acceleration definition a dt, right? a is equal to dv dt, we know, dv over dt, and dv is equal to a dt. When we take the integral of both sides, time from 0 to some other time is equal to v0 which is the initial position initial velocity at time 0 and some velocity then when you take the integral for the both sides we will come up v is equal to v0 plus a dt I'm not gonna go through the integral how to, I took integral is very easy. We know that dv is v, which is from v to v0, is gonna be v minus v0, and a dt, which we take a as a constant, so only dt is gonna be taken integral, it's gonna be t. t minus 0 is gonna be t. So uh, here, let me delete it because it's not t dt. Uh, is a t. I'm uh, sorry, let me write it down like this a t, right? V a t, not dt anymore. And uh, when we calculate our velocity with respect to acceleration, let's jump to another one, which is so we know the velocity term is ds is equal to what is it v dt right so we know that the velocity is ds over dt so we know that is from s0 to s at time 0 to t so when i take the integral we know that v is v0 a t so let's bring this guy again so s0 s is ds which is equal to integral of 0 to t let's make an parenthesis v0 a t and we are going to take the integral and then we will come up at the end s is equal to s0 plus v0t right the initial velocity 
multiply by t plus 1 over 2 1 over 2 a t square you guys remember this formula as well right so it's our famous fundamental formulas for defining the velocity and the position okay let's go a little bit up and then let's make the last one which is our the, the third equation as we defined vdv our differential form vdv is equal to ads ads and we take both sides integral we know that v is going to v0 to v which is from time uh, 0 to t, t and this guy is going to be s0 to s right so when we take the integral you will see v is gonna be v dv is gonna be v square over 2 right so you will end up v square is equal to v0 v not square plus 2 a s minus s0 s minus s0 so it is the velocity and acceleration term without using time we know that v uh, v0 v square minus v0 square is equal to 2a delta s so we have this one two and three these three fundamentals equations but we need to make a note here we need to make a note here okay and we need to write it down as we need to say this is wallet this is wallet only on, only only acceleration is constant okay so these three equation is valid so you can use these formulas only this acceleration term here is a is constant what does it mean it means a is not function of time okay or a is not function of s it's gonna be a number like two three four is not be a function or it doesn't depend on time or it doesn't depends on position therefore we can make it this one or it doesn't depend on the velocity even though if velocity it depends on velocity we shouldn't use this formula we can't use not shouldn't we cannot use these formulas so the main point here if our acceleration is constant we can use these fundamental equations if not we need to use this integration we will end up another another formulas okay we will see in our examples and then we will cover all this uh, one by one okay let's make one example all right say example one a particle travels a particle travels along a straight line along a straight line so you need to pay attention here the straight line means we can do in rectilinear equation to the it means like we are we are going to use the cartesian coordinate to the right with the right with a velocity of velocity of v uh, is going to be a vector quantity but i'm going to write in this form v is equal to v is equal to 4t or t minus 3t squared 3t squared okay 
meter per second where t is in seconds okay. also s is equal to 0 s is equal to 0 where t is equal to 0 it means our initial position is 0 what is asking find the acceleration acceler acceler acceleration and position of the particle when t is equal to 4 seconds t is equal to 4 seconds so this is our example let's try to uh, solve this problem okay so how we are gonna start we know that uh, acceleration acceleration is uh, dv over dt right dv over dt because we need to find where is it find the acceleration so a is equal to dv dt v is a function of time so i am gonna take the first derivative of this function with respect to time which is 4t minus 3t square right so uh, when i take the the first derivative of this guy is going to be 4 minus 6t what i'm going to do i will just leave it this guy as uh, in this form okay is a this for function but let the, the question is asking us to find the acceleration so i will just plug it four seconds where i see t so the acceleration is see uh, this guy is four four minus 60 so it's gonna be uh, four minus uh, 24 is gonna be minus 20 meter per second square so what we did we find the acceleration when t is equal to four seconds second part is we are gonna find the position we know that the v is equal to ds dt or in another words ds is equal to v dt right uh, v dt v dt so if we take the both side integral we know that time is equal to zero s is equal to zero so i will plug in zero time is equal to four i want to find s so s is equal to because ds is s minus s zero s is equal to integral from zero to t the function of velocity which is uh, 40 minus 3 t square 40 minus 3 t square dt so let's take this integral okay let's take this one let's make a space for us so s is equal to when we take the, the integral of this function it's gonna be t square over uh, 4t square over 2 is gonna be 2t square right and we are gonna take the integral is gonna be 3 t cube over 3 so it's gonna be minus t cube okay where from 0 to uh, so it's gonna be 4 this one so four second we are gonna find s so when we plug zero it's gonna be zero four is gonna be two uh, four square two multiplied by four square minus four cube when we uh, uh, calculated this guy we are gonna find it uh, is gonna be minus 32 meters Okay, uh, so we find our position in negative direction 
33 meters and our uh, acceleration is going to be minus 20 meter per second square so it's going to go the minus direction okay so it's going to go to uh, reverse direction say because when you see uh, when you plug here 4 it's going to be 4 multiplied by 4 16 when you uh, um, 4 square multiplied by 3 the velocity at 4 is going to minus direction so first is going straight line then turn back go back so it's going to be 0 then it's going to go to positive direction then comes back to 2 to 2 ok and this s is going to be given us minus 32 meter its position Alright, let's do another example. Example the key to sorry. A particle is moving along. A particle particle is moving along a straight line such that its velocity is velocity is defined as v is equal to v is equal to minus 4 s square minus 4 s square which is meter per second where where s is in meters uh, find the velocity and find the velocity sorry, velocity and uh, acceleration acceleration as a function of is a function of time if s is equal to 2 when t is equal to 0 so our initial position right now not 0 anymore it is 2 and let's try to do this question uh, let's open up our pen again so we are gonna find the velocity first so we know that v is equal to uh, ds over dt ds over dt so um, which is this one we know that here velocity is minus 4 s square minus 4 s square right and then when we uh, make it uh, separation of variables as from your calculus one we know that we can uh, separate all these variables as uh, minus 4 dt so i'm gonna put dt over here and s into other side is equal to ds over s square right so s we know that from s0 which is 2 to some position right and we know that this guy is from 0 to t so we know that initial position is 2 to some s and from 0 to t 3 t we are gonna find it so uh, when we take the integral is gonna be minus 4 t is equal to minus 1 over s from 2 to s 2 s right so it's gonna be minus 4 t again is equal to minus 
1 over s minus 1 over 2. So uh, when we take s uh, with respect to time, we will find s is equal to when you uh, manipulate it. Mm, s is equal to 2 over 8 t plus 1. So take this s into here and manipulate this equation here you will see you will end up s is equal to 2 over 8 t okay so what we need to find the velocity and acceleration as a function of time uh, so what we need to know we know s we will know right now the velocity because we know that ds over dt is going to give us the velocity with respect to time so d over dt the first derivative of s which is 2 over 8t plus 1 2 over 8t plus 1 when you take this derivative you will end up minus 16 over minus 16 over 8t plus 1 square okay so when you take acceleration you need to take the second derivative of s with respect to time so when you put these guys in the second derivative you will end up 256 256 over 80 plus 1, 8t plus 1 cube. So we found the acceleration and the velocity with respect to time, not with respect to position. Here I gave you guys the velocity with respect to position function, and right now I bring out the velocity and acceleration. With respect to time, which is 8t. So whenever you 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 give like time is equal to five seconds, what is the velocity and what is the acceleration? We will have it right now. Okay, this week is enough. Uh, see you next week.